Hey guys, basically uh, making a paint rack. I didn't like my paints so close together that you couldn't grab one individual paint. You have to move them away, kind of thing. So, to PVC, cut one and uh, three quarters inch parts out of it. Um, it was three ten foot pieces. Chop them all up, and then I'm starting to glue them together. Seven pieces into little clusters like this, and then I'm gonna take them to the belt sander and sand them flat on both sides. And then after that, we'll start assembling them. And uh, once that's all done, paint it, put it on the wall. And then uh, see here. paints will fit right into it and then I'm going to airbrush the ends of the paints so all I have to look at is the ends not the whole thing condense them and put them in space should be um, about 200 slots so I'll have plenty of room to adjust them accordingly well, next video will be the sanding then assembly Okay guys, uh, paint rack uh, made out of PVC for Vallejo, Reaper, hobby paint. Takes four 10 foot lengths of one inch PVC, schedule 40, and what else, uh, either a handsaw, some sort of pipe cutter, I'm um, using a 10 inch bandsaw, um, just all depends on what you have available, um, belt sander would be really cool, um, but, and then I'll try to edit out the noise here. We're cutting, have the guides set at one and three quarters inches, uh, between the blade and the guide. Always grab from the back of the blade, never from the front. get the idea you do that until you run out of pipe um, I'm getting 80 83 pieces out of each uh, pipe section so do the math and uh, I'll be back with the assembly hey guys I'm trying to do a voiceover for this one um, Basically here, just want to show quick um, why I use the bandsaw to cut these out. I can actually get a couple of extra pieces by using the bandsaw because it's a lot more of a delicate uh, cut than, say, a chop saw or a table saw or any of the others. Nice, fine cut. Um, you know, here... You can see that I'm doing uh, one of the tail end pieces. Uh, there's one piece, and then 
it just has a little I can just trim off the very end of it as you'll see here coming up in a few seconds yes going very slow don't need any kickbacks when I'm cutting this close trying the voice over here so you don't have to listen to the bat saw like in the previous clip going over it uh, it was pretty annoying to me too but uh, please let me know if you like the voiceover or not now here I took the uh, extra scraps and primed them glued them together and uh, or and then primed and painted them again um, painted them all black cut them off at like a 40 30 45 degree you know somewhere in there angle just did it with a handsaw and you'll see that in the next clip I added in um, but this thing uh, has worked out phenomenal you'll see it all painted up and how I'm using it and everything in the next shot here but uh, I don't know exactly what I was trying to say here but you know it's okay so on to the next clip thanks for watching guys hey guys once again um, uh, as you saw in the previous part uh, the extra long tubes I cut them at 30 40 degree angle something like that it wasn't too precise whatever felt right to me and this thing has been working great for pen, paintbrush holder um, pen I got some clay shapers in there um, even if uh, I have to stop painting for a while hands cramp whatever I could put you know since it's the same tubing in the smaller ones I could put like the last color I've been working on. Um, got my guys I'm painting up currently. You know, um, but it makes it for a really nice uh, holder for all my different, uh, like here's dry brushes, and I keep a couple of small used up brushes for transferring paint or whatever. Uh, my absolutely way huge brush um, I think that let me see yeah that's a number two <coughs> but um, get back on yep been working really nice um, that's about it um, I do just picked up some more of the uh, uh, what's the name War Gamer, you know, and then the different sizes, three different sizes, all the way from insane detail to just regiment where you would do the you know bulk work with, because uh, I burned out burnt through a couple of brushes doing a lot of minis so anyway back to the rest of the video kind of the pattern I'm going for. Started by priming each piece and gluing it to the next one, making clusters of seven centerpiece and then six around it. Uh, seems to be pretty 
standard if you're using all the same size pieces. That's the pattern. Um, took 19 of those uh, clusters to get this jagged pattern. And then you just take some of the extra little pieces of tubing and you'll be gluing these into place eventually. of your paint rack. So what I'm, I'm also going to add, keep following around, going around until I run out of pieces because uh, I have more paints than what this will do. I think it's 147 at this point and I'm going to add 80 more around the outside just to uh, make it a little bit bigger, maybe two more rows. And that should give me um, well over 200 uh, watts. So that's what I'm looking for. Uh, what's really neat is when you, if you go to do more later on, uh, use a sanding pad and just around the outside, take whatever paint you use off glue more pieces on it. Makes it real simple to expand if you end up more paints. Alright, um, there's that. Um, you could also, I, I don't know how to look, but let's say you, you'd like your um, your washes separately, okay? You can add on just a couple of clusters And there's, you know, 14 slots just for washes or, you know, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to make mine uh, a heck, giant hexagon or pentagon. <laughs> All right, guys. Next one is the sander. Okay, guys, uh, I have the pattern all set out here. Everything with the purple on it pretty much is glued, so I'm going to show you some of this stuff real quick. See these seven here, that unglued cluster? This is the first of the... We have all the purple ones already set, already done, that I showed you earlier. Now we have the expansion to make it larger and more paints, whatever you want to do. I'm using this uh, Christie's Red Hot Blue Glue. Seems to set really fast, really easy. Start with the um, priming of the stuff, of course. And I just try to make it as fast as possible. It doesn't need a whole bunch of primer. Doesn't have to be a deep purple or anything. No pun intended. Just purple. Okay. Next. Let's get through this as quick as possible. This has a lot of them to do. I don't even have to do all of them all purple, but it also helps with the paint to stick. So why not? Um, as well as the glue, of course, you know, what it's here for. I try to wipe out the marks. I don't know why. Doesn't really matter if they're all going to be painted. But I do. Almost everyone has printing on it of some sort from their labeling. Or this primer will just wipe it right out. Doubt it would have anything to do with the paint not sticking or something, but I don't like taking chance. Might want to use gloves. I don't think it 
takes too much time to put them on and off, so I'll just walk around this purple hint. So this is going to be your standard shape for 99% of everything we're doing. It's just that seven part circle, whatever you want to call it. Then we're going to do uh, two. I'm going to glue two of them together. And that'll come in a little later. I'm just going to do this whole side. And I know this is like almost literally watching paint dry, but. Don't do this stuff inside, guys. This stuff stinks. And gals, of course, if you're out there watching this stuff. This is definitely, you know, the, there's the, uh, like the Minotaur paints. They're slightly larger than an inch. They're an inch and an eighth or something like that uh, for their bottle diameter. Just get the next size up for um, of your PVC, and sure enough, it'll fit that. You know, just depends on what your main painting is going to be with. Okay. Now I put that on. This stuff does evaporate uh, pretty quickly. Okay, now we're going to set up our clusters. I do everything in twos. Okay. There's our cluster. So you go two, three, oh, that's already starting to spick, and two. So I just do three, two sections here for that. Then this one is two. Three and two. So there, there, and there. I keep these two out. Use them in a second. So I just go ahead and prepare these. I have a piece of cardboard from all my packages coming in for me at Christmas. This stuff's great. And we just start gluing pairs of two, lining them up. Boom. We'll be done for this. So let's show that. Containers almost done for. Swipe. You don't have to slather all this on. Just line them up. Boom. This stuff sets pretty nicely. So by the time I'm done with this last one here, the first ones will be ready to glue together, basically. And I come up a little bit into it and kind of center that bead of glue and let set. You know, put it in place once it's there, leave it alone. And there you go. Make a nice solid line. It doesn't have to be dripping off the thing at all because you're you're squeegeeing it up to itself. Line it up. None of these, not a one, except the last ones I did on a bandsaw. I did the rest of them on a chop saw. None of the uh, chop saw ones are the same straight, you know, cut, whatever. Doesn't matter if we're taking them over to the uh, sander tomorrow, because it is actually raining here right now. 
and everything's covered up and I don't want to uncover it and ruin the belt and all that happy stuff. But it is fine to glue all this stuff together. And just remember to leave two out so that you can use them for finishing off. Okay, these are the last pair. I already pulled them out, so we're going to do all of these. And that's the last dregs of this glue. On the Christie's blue stuff, get a large purple primer and a large Christie's red hot. I don't like storing the leftovers after they've been opened. I always seem to come go grab it to do something with it and it's all dried up and gunky and waste the money. But if you're doing a project this size, get the larger can. Get a small can and don't open it and leave that for when you really need it. Okay. Now. Okay. Need. Make sure I got everything going correctly here. Good. Okay. Now, first thing we're going to do is take this center piece and we're going to add one to it. Same way as you did the other two. That lid we glue, line it up. Boom. Again, a little squeegee action there. And lay down the board. Now, since these are not and they are going to go on the sander, I'm not worried about the ends. I'm lining up the center of it, trying to get everything. So if I sand off a quarter inch or eighth of an inch, it'll all be flush. That's what that's what I'm looking for. So it'll end up sanding flat. Okay. Now we have for the round clusters. We have. Two sets of two, one flip it, got the other set. And on these ones, if I get some glue on here, there, 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 and there. Okay. I try to come up to the middle, not necessary. Uh, you can get more precise if you want. But I try to just cover the up to the middle. And everything, if I do that, I'm sure that it will touch the adhesive. Take your set of two, again, line it up so that if you sand it, or when you sand it, it's level. Wait a second or two. And now it's already starting to set. Okay. Flip it over, more glue. Try to do this fast. You guys, you know, you get the idea of how everything works. So. There, that cluster is done. Now, the change in our cluster is because we have this stuff. Okay. Where this, this one goes, right here, we need to fill in this gap and then just two over to there. Okay these together real quick and then we'll make the transition there. Okay. 
So we have two here. Again, we're going to do the third piece on. I'm only going to do it on the on my camera, but. Glued, cool. Okay. Now do this one just like you did the full circle ones, but we're only going to do half of it for this uh, project, part of the project. Okay, we're going to get slivers in here, and up to the middle. I'm not going for pretty or neat or Penny or something. Definitely want enough glue. Uh, cans just about had it. Yeah, so we'll pass it after this goes into here. Okay. Again, I know we have to clean up. Okay, everything is sand down about evenly. Okay. It's going to sit there. Now, that part goes in there. The last two go in there. And there's one side. Just like that. Okay? So, basically, I could glue these on. But it's easy enough to, when you're gluing everything else, just to stick them in place. You know, you make the bundles. I might even glue this section to this section you know after everything's sanded so that's a section and then maybe even that to it so i just put the pieces together and they're done and i pretty much do these two just like i did the rest but i'm putting them aside and now i'll just go ahead and do it this is an easy connection Give it a minute, etc., etc., etc. This one will go in here. One set, pretty much. Trip one is dry. And make sure, boom, all set. So you have now have a, a section to do. And boom, done. You can do like these. You want one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't even know why I bothered to count it. Six sides, okay? It went from uh, five to six sides. Uh, it's all how you put the initial one together. Do one, and then six around it, just like this. One with six around it. Um, and it'll should come out just perfect. So we'll get uh, these put together and uh, all that stuff. I just broke the connection there, but that's fine. That's why it, uh, it's so easy. Okay. That should be about it. Okay, guys. Uh, there it is, all glued together. 219 slots. Uh, I decided not to take it to the uh, sander um, the, it's pretty much flat and uh, you know you're not going to be seeing it it's going to be all painted black so uh, just assembled it and uh, now it's time to let it dry do its thing and we'll spray paint tomorrow instead of sanding and then we're going to hang it on the wall and start doing you know, filling the paints in uh, as I paint the tops of the squeeze bottles so that I can see them end on. Uh, I am going to gloss coat the uh, 
the caps to make it last longer um, so it'll throw off the actual color a little bit but it'll be close enough for me to tell and uh, I'll have both uh, Vallejo and Reaper here so that will be the next uh, couple vids and hopefully I'll be able to splice all this together into one good vid um, yep on to the next all right guys there it is uh, got a few paints thrown in there um, it's gonna be pretty nice pretty nice in the process of painting the end caps so of the, the different paints there and uh, so I can identify them from the end cap and that's about it